This is the Torpedo 18B. This particular design is from the 50s. This model is specifically from 1956. There's also an 18A. Uh, the difference between that and this one is that this one has a tabulator. There's also a model 18S, which is sort of like a deluxe version. The Torpedo 18S will additionally have some nice looking feature detail beneath the logo on Torpedo written here. The Torpedo 18S will also have a different kind of set of keys. The top of them would have some Bakelite details. Or rather, there would be like a plate of Bakelite on top for the keys. I've been told it's Bakelite. I haven't had an 18S myself, but I'm not 100% sure on that. I could be wrong. The Torpedo 18B, in terms of functions and features, is well-equipped among the well-equipped models. It has the tabulator that can be set by... Um, whenever you want from the keyboard. It doesn't need you to fiddle with pins on the back of the machine. It also has a dampener, so that whenever you do trigger tabulator, the carriage isn't been left to run free. This can, in some cases, damage some machines, so it's a nice thing to have. So whenever you press tab and there is no tabulator point set, it won't just slam to the side. It'll go nicely and controlled all the way over. If you want to say you have a if you say you want, you want a tabulator point at point 10, you use the lever on the left side to create a tabulator point by pushing it up. Then you can move back, use the tabulator to always move to that position. If you want to remove that point, simply pull the lever back whenever you're at the position where there is a stop. Pretty simple, pretty typical, pretty standard. There's also a paper rest that you flip up manually. It can extend if you wish. There's also the levers to release the carriage is on the back by the keyboard, by the knob that you push up and then you have a free rein. The same lead key can also be, or the same lever can be engaged from both the left and the right side and they are linked. So whenever you push one, the other also moves. You have the paper release lever, which you push up, which and then will allow you to pull the paper out. You have a paper rest support that can be freely moved to the sides. Lifting this lid also in the back will reveal... I can't show you that right now, but if I feel for my fingers, I can tell right here is a margin that I can push down and pull to the side to define where a left margin is, as the same with right margin. You have a line selector as in how many lines will return lever actually create. It is at, like right now, it's set to one. It can also be set to two, three, and four, where two would be one and a half row, three would be two rows, and four would be two and a half rows. This, on this machine, does not snap into place, which I find a little bit frustrating and annoying. I'm, I can't remember if that's just how 18Bs work or if that is something particular with this model that's not correct. There is also a release lever that can you can push forward. This will release the ratchet on to the cogs by the platen, which will enable you to free roll as much as you wish without being constrained by the distance between the ratchets. And enabling it gets it back. So let's do a quick typing test. Now the keen-eyed observer will have noticed, perhaps, that this is lacking a plastic shield in front here. There's, there's one on the right, but it's missing on the left. There should have been one, but they are plastic, and as they get older, they get fragile, and they tend to, they, they tend to break sometimes. So, let us do some typing. So my initial thoughts on this machine 
is that it feels extremely nice to type on. Whenever I push this key, I can feel and I can tell that it immediately actuates the type arm. It just starts with it. There is no dead space here. I, I, the machine is excellent in terms of generating type arm momentum. This isn't always given. Not all machines do this well. Some are more dependent on you on creating all the momentum yourself, but this helps me do that. The machine itself, and that is particular to this model, has a small problem when it comes to skipping. I'm not sure if this is visible right now, but in the text right here I have an example where the typewriter has made a jump past one point. So there is some escapement issues here. I've still not yet determined exactly what that is, or if it's just a matter of cleaning it out, but if I flip this on its back, the good thing about the 18B typewriter is that it I can clearly see the escapement wheel from here. It isn't hidden behind plates as these typewriters sometimes ha are, so that's good. In terms of feeling to type, the keys have a very nice shape to them. There's a nice socketed dent in the keys. It reminds me a lot of the Hermes machines uh, from the 60s. These keys are very similar in feel to those. Interestingly, this key is upside down, but... <laughs> so the, the, the key itself is physically upside down, but this letter is the correct print way. Like, this is the Norwegian letter Ø, and this line should go from up in the right down to the left. <laughs> but this, it has been painted and printed on the wrong way around, so the right way to do this would be to flip this thing 180 degrees, but then the letter would look wrong. So that's an interesting error. Typing one key down gives me a good sense of momentum. I can feel it actuating. I do have a problem with... I don't know if this is particular to this machine or if it's something about torpedo, but it does require me to watch out for how I'm actually typing. It takes very little to get ghosting here, meaning letters will sometimes end up being double printed because when you type, the type R moves up, hits the platen, which is very hard, bounces back, and because I'm st still for just even a fraction of a second keeping the pressure down, it will bounce back and double hit. This is something we sometimes often see, and hard platens are often can, can often contribute to this. And feeling it now is that this platen is not among the hardest platens I've felt, but it is hard enough for me not to be able to even put a dent in the rubber with my nail, which is also very typical. But the ghosting, even, even with a really hard platen, the ghosting isn't necessarily this bad in other machines that I've used. So it shouldn't really be that big of a problem. So something leads me to believe that there's something about the torpedo and its internal mechanisms that enables this to happen. It is, however, avoided if I just focus about releasing at the moment that I have typed a key. This is something you should do anyway. It's a good practice for how you should type. You should imagine the keys being red hot and that you want to press it with enough firmness and speed to actuate the key, but you don't want to keep your finger there because you'll get burned. So you want to do quick snaps, almost whip the keys. That's the idea, at least. Any machine has a bit of a soul somehow, some f finicky way of working, and you have to learn how to do that. When I type a key, sometimes with some machines I can feel like, almost like there's a cog system going like, if this is the top of the key and this is the bottom, I can feel cogs being actuated, even though there are no cogs in the machine. So it feels almost like pulling a clockwork. And that is a feeling that I really enjoy. It gives me a tactile sense that there are, that there are mechani mechanics or there are mechanisms inside here that are doing its job very well. This machine doesn't have that. It doesn't give me that clockwork feeling. What it does do, however, is it has a very good feeling in terms of resistance. And it is immediate from the moment my fingers hit 
and all the way through. So even though I'm generating momentum, I don't feel like the key's resistance is disappearing underneath my finger, as some machines do. Some machines, like for example the Royal uh, Quiet Deluxe, likes to generate momentum to the degree that when you start typing you can almost feel like the key wants to continue its path, even though you're not really pushing down. Which means that somehow the resistance just kind of goes away from beneath the key. Some people think that's the optimal typing solution and they'd be right for them. Uh, some other people, like me, like the feel that the key is always there and generating just a little bit of momentum or a little bit of resistance at all times. And that is definitely the case with the Torpedo. As an extra boon to this typewriter, to the Torpedo 18B, I wanted to show you the case that this thing came in. Because this thing is spectacular. I had had a torpedo before, and I really really liked using it, but I ended up selling it because as, as excellent and beautiful as it was, it didn't really give me that much more in terms of what it added to my collection. This thing, however, came in a full metal, uh, sheet metal, case that it felt and looked just super solid and very sturdy. I thought it was very cool and I definitely needed it in my collection, so I just had to have it. So this is the t machine that I wanted to compare to the Torpedo in this setting. This is the Alpina SK24. It has the same set of features that the uh, Torpedo has, but it has chosen to implement them in a little bit of a different way. One of the differences is, while on the Torpedo you set your tabulator stops with a lever on the left side, uh, on this machine you set the, the lever on the right side. So moving to a, sp a space where you want to have it to a tabulator point, you put your finger on the plus side on the lever and push down. Now I have created a tabs point. for. Some people, and myself included when I first saw the machine, I felt this was counterintuitive. I assumed seeing the plus sign on the top, I thought it meant that the lever should be pushed towards the plus sign to create a tab spot. That is not the case. Pushing up now would remove the spot. Noting that we get to the point where we just created our spot, removing it will take it away. But also take note that this machine has dampening on the carriage release, meaning whenever it's released it doesn't fly directly off. There's a resistance built in to make sure that whenever you push down the tab key, uh, a resistance, a natural resistance will uh, actuate. If you just push down on the carriage release, it doesn't do that. It would fly freely straight off, but pressing tab, it's a slightly more controlled return, but not completely so. The Torpedo will offer more resistance and make a more smooth carriage return upon using tabulator than the Alpina will. It does make a little bit of sound when I use the tabulator. I'm not 100% sure if that's by design. It could be. Uh, it might be wrong. Someone out there might be able to tell me whether or not this is by design and Alpinas are just like that. Some people who know me and know this machine from debates on the Discord server will probably already have been uh, trying to recuperate from the shock that this thing used to have a Garfield sticker. This was uh, on the server known as the Garfield Typer because of that sticker. The, the sticker fell off by itself when I was trying to clean the machine. Of course, this has led to the fact that the server now talks about how the Eldritch Horror Garfield will kill me in my nightmares and ha harvest my soul for the atrocities committed upon this machine. So far, that hasn't happened, but until it does, I'm just going to continue making these videos. The machine also had some graffiti. It had black markings written Carpe Diem on it. While I was trying to clean the machine in general, uh, I noted that uh, when, I, when I wiped a rug over it, it just came off and it just smeared black out over it, so it was either just letting it be smeared or just cleaning it straight off and I opted to clean it straight off. Normally if a previous owner has done a change to the machine I will usually try to keep it that way. I think a machine that has markings, graffiti, names, tags, even retailer brands or even stickers that telling that the machine was serviced at some point, I think that tells a story of the machine and usually I will try to keep it that way. 
but this thing got fixed up. It has a lid. Underneath the lid there's some felt for soundproofing. It doesn't sit very well, uh, so it comes off extremely easy, and I feel probably it should have been there should have been a little bit more resistance in it. It doesn't make much of a problem, so I'm not going to look into that. Inside the machine, there's not much more to say, just like with the torpedo. There's no extra touch bar lever to adjust the, the resistance and the keys. The segment itself is dirty, but functioning. One of the major differences between this machine and the torpedo is that the torpedo is segment shifted, and this, as you can see, is carriage shifted. It doesn't lift the entire carriage though, mind you. As you note when you watch on the side here, it lifts the platen and some of the internal mechanisms, but not the entire carriage. So, this is the underneath, or the underbelly of the beast, as it were. As you can see, the machine is fairly clean. Uh, what I do like is that the escapement cogs on this machine is actually very well exposed underneath. On the torpedo, that is also the case, but not as much so as this machine. Okay, let's try to finally use this thing. So, adding paper. One thing that this machine does not do that the torpedo kind of has a beat on is that these paper feed rollers, they do not move. So if you have an odd sized paper like me, when I like to write my letters, I like to use A5. I also like that because whenever I buy A4 paper, I just fold it double and then I have some slight padding whenever typing. But if I just make sure to put it just a little bit in center of the, of the carriage, that doesn't really mean anything much because I can still get it uh, to hold down on the paper, and we want that to happen. So moving the margin to its to a good position. It's easier on this to see where the margin stop is and that it is well fitted to the paper. There's also a paper rest arm that is extended, just like the torpedo, but on this thing it is released via a key and spring, so it just pops right up. Typing on this Alpina, I feel I can type actually faster than I can on the Torpedo. These keys are dented in the same way that the Torpedo is, but the Torpedo's keys are more square than this one. Uh, this one is a little bit more rounded off on top, while the Torpedo reminds me, as I said, quite a lot about the Hermes machines. Typing on this, I feel I have more responsive control than I do on the, on the Torpedo. When I type on this, uh, the action inside this machine reminds me a little bit about the Triumph that I've used before. In that I, I heard I heard someone once say it feels like you're pulling on a pulley system, and I feel that is very accurate for the Triumph. And I want to bring it back here because I feel that's a little bit what's happening here. There's no dead space here, but if I push it halfway down with some speed and keep my finger there, I can feel the type arm falling back down. So freezing the movement here it makes the type arm inside, it doesn't stop its movement just because I stop my finger. So whenever I push this a little bit fast down, halfway down, I can feel this falling back down. Meaning it's like throwing a stone at a wall. You move your arm, the ball moves with your arm, you release the ball, the ball continues the motion and then hits the platen. This keyboard fits my fingers very well. And I could, e I could easily type out my go-to sentence faster on this and with more ease and more accuracy than I could with the torpedo. Which kind of hurts my soul because I really like that crate. I want to be able to really like the torpedo and I do really like it, but not as much as I like the Alpina. Okay, 
I think that's about what I can say for now with with the Alpina right here and the Torpedo not a part of the game, so I'm going to bring out the Torpedo and we'll do a side-by-side -side comparison. Okay, so here we have both of them. Now, as we see, the Alpina is a little bit taller than the Torpedo, but as well as the carriage, just a little bit taller up. Uh, I also noticed that the keyboard is also a little bit more raised up on the Alpina compared to the Torpedo. It's just slightly lower down. In terms of feeling the rise of the keys, I think I think the Alpina is slightly more raised up. So the Torpedo, as I said, is segment shifted. Alpina is carriage shifted. But in terms of how much they weigh, they are very similar in weights. The carriage, the carriage doesn't weigh much, as you doesn't you don't have to lift the entire carriage. Uh, and the segment is actually surprisingly heavy spring shift loaded. So even if it's just a segment, it's still a little bit heavy to actually move this. So in typing on this, remember when I talked about how sometimes when you use a typewriter, it kind of feels like you're winding clockwork whenever you're pushing a key. And that the torpedo has a lot of resistance in the key, but it doesn't necessarily feel like there's clockwork in here. That is somewhat the case with this machine. Not as much as, for example, the Hermes 3000. Hermes 3000 is a good example of a machine that feels like clockwork when you press down. It feels like it's there's cog work and stuff that's working. There isn't, but it feels like it. The Alpina is a little bit in the same is a little bit the same way. There's something about the resistance that feels like it's mechanical, not just a spring. That is the case with the torpedo. That just feels like resistance. So this has good feeling in that it has a heavy spring-loaded key that feels very nice to use, but it feels you can tell it's a spring-loaded thing. It's the same with this, but somehow it feels more mechanical or like clockwork with cogs. So the Alpina has, for me personally, the better feel, even though I usually prefer machines that has the same amount of resistance from you start pushing the key until the type arm has completed its movement. There's also something to be said about the sound. I don't know how good the microphone on my camera is, but the sound on the torpedo is it's fairly well maintained. It's not a super light, high sound. It's not. It doesn't make up a lot of racket. But the sound is thin, if you know what I mean. While the sound on the Alpina is a little bit more blunt, a little bit more heavy. It feels substantial. I, I kind of like it, even though it's a little bit more noisy. But between these two, I actually think I like the Alpina best. And considering, again, the awesome crate of the Torpedo, it kind of hurts my soul. I kind of wanted the Torpedo to be better than the Alpina. The Alpina is legendary in typewriter enthusiast lines. People know the Alpina as a really good typer. And people know the Torpedo as a really good typer. They're both really good. But to me, in my personal tastes, I think the Alpina wins. I wish that the Alpina would have had the keys of the Torpedo. The plastic, like the how, just how these are shaped. They feel nicer than this, and than these do. So that was a closer look at the Alpina SK24. This one from 1954, and the Torpedo 18B. This one from 1956. So between these two, I type faster and more accurately somehow on the Alpina, but I still enjoy typing on the Torpedo. They're both excellent machines. So yeah, that was the comparison between these. Let me know if you have any personal experience with either or both of these machines and what you think. I hope you enjoyed this comparison and as always, stay happy and stay typing.